Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today I'm starting the process of seed starting. I've been meaning to do this for a while, but time has kind of gotten away from me. But I do seed starting kind of like in a process, and I thought that since a lot of people learn from my channel, that I would bring you guys along and show you where I decide to plant seeds and what type of seeds I decide to plant. So it's gonna be a two day process. Um, we're gonna do some seeds starting inside and also some seeds starting outside and some little soil preparation things. So first though, I need to pick some stuff. So I got the basket and let's get going. Okay, so when you are seed starting, um, one of the things you wanna consider is what time of year is it? How much time you have left in your growing season for certain things, um, temperatures, and just conditions, really, of the soil and of outside and different things like that. I know that in Arizona, we're getting ready to hit monsoon season. Those are the loudest birds ever. <laughs> we're getting ready to hit monsoon season coming up where it's going to have lots of heavy, heavy rains and some of my places that may not drain too well might not need something that will suffer from a lot of water log. And also, we're getting ready to hit really, really high temperatures. So I mean like, it's been getting up to like 110, but I mean like 115, 120. So I also want to plant things that can kind of take those temperatures too as well. And pull up stuff that I know can't take those temperatures. So with that said, the first thing that I know is getting ready to go are my Swiss chard. My Swiss chard, and I also think, guys, the kale. The kale I was thinking about leaving, um, and I might still contemplate on it, but I know for sure the Swiss chard I'm going to pull up. It's now kind of, the taste is kind of affected because it's getting so hot. And I want to plant um, black eyed peas in this area. So I'm going to pull up all the Swiss chard and then I'm going to add some soil because as you can see, my soil levels are pretty low in here. This bed gets grown in a lot pretty much all year long. So I do have to refresh it every now and then. So many people have been guessing the right answer on what I'm growing for my mystery plant that, okay, so I will give it that I'm not really good at keeping secrets <laughs> and I'm not really good at giving like indiscreet clues. So my clue was pretty much, well, you, if you grow it by the 15th, it'll be ready by the end of October. So most people guessed it, I am gonna grow a pumpkin. And I'm not gonna grow just any pumpkin, guys. I wanna grow like a full-on jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, like a full-size, like seven, 10-pound pumpkin. Because every year, me and Mr. Benson carve pumpkins for Halloween. So we both get a pumpkin from the store, and I roast all the seeds, and we have a little contest just with the two of us. And then we put them outside front for when we get our one or two trick-or-treaters. <laughs> So this year, I want to grow them myself, and I've never tried it before because, I mean, I have a small space garden, but now I have a bed that is pretty much open that I think that if I just kind of wind the vines around over and over again and let it grow, that it will work. So this is where it's... All right, guys. So the pumpkin is going here. <laughs> So these pots are just sitting there um, for right now because I need to repot them with some herbs. That is another thing I'm actually going to uh, start from seed are some herbs and get them growing inside so that then when it's time, probably like late August, I can put them outside in these pots. But the pumpkin is only going to have to compete with the onions, or sorry, the corn which is on one far side and then the onions and the sad little artichoke and the sage, which is on another side. But this whole middle, guys, I think that if I just continue to wrap the vines around and maybe even let the vines come out here a little bit, then I can pull off growing a pumpkin. I might actually get a rug to put underneath here, so then that way, if the pumpkin comes out, then it has something cool to kind of sit on versus being on the hot concrete. 
if I pull this off guys it's gonna be great it's gonna be so great um, but you know we'll see we'll see how it goes and if not, I'll just have this giant pumpkin vine and maybe some baby pumpkins, but I think that I'm going to be able to grow this pumpkin. So you guys tell me down below if you think that I can pull it off too. <laughs> but right now we have shishito peppers and we've been eating the shishito peppers and they've been delicious because now is the time for them. So we have a bunch of them on the plants and I'm going to pick them for dinner because I'm going to make some sage rosemary roasted chicken with shishito peppers with a uh, sriracha mayo sauce so I think that sounds great so guys I used to think that two shishito plants was enough but we go through like it's like a war when we put down the shishito peppers in our house and like we really like battle out for these things so I think that next year I'm going to grow an additional two shishito pepper plants Okay, so part of the planning is also realizing what your family is eating a lot of. Um, and this is really something you want to pay attention to when you're growing a small space garden because you only have so much room. So shishito peppers are going to be on my list of things to seed start. Um, peppers can grow all throughout the fall. So they can go, grow throughout the summer. They don't flower as much once it gets like 100 and like... 20, um, even underneath the shade cloth but they'll stay and they'll keep so by the time the fall hits you'll have more shishito peppers kind of um, flowering so since we are going through these a lot and it's something that we're eating a lot and we ate a lot last season too as well then I'm going to start at least two more shishito pepper plants because like I said it's a war zone when I put those shishito peppers down because I use them as an appetizer, but I think I might have to divide these up because there's, <laughs> there's not that many. <laughs> okay guys, so I'm also gonna look at little open spaces where I can stick things. I have one here, which is the eggplant that I've been nursing back to health is gonna go. And then this basil plant is doing really, really well next to this tomato. Every time I grow tomatoes and basil together, they really help each other out. So I'm gonna put another basil plant right here in front of, on this side of it. Um, I have a new basil that is a, a lettuce leaf basil that I'm interested in trying. So I'm gonna get that one going here and maybe something going here. So it might be another basil, we'll see. But I also wanna put another basil here because basil also kind of helps with pest control too as well when it comes to tomatoes. And these tomatoes, something's going on here guys. So this is one that I got in the bunch of spider mites. So it might be some spider mite damage or it also could be the fact that when I water this one, it drips down. So I am seeing some fungus nets now that I'm looking at this one. So I think it might be more so too much water is getting put into this one and it's dripping down onto this one which is putting too much water into this one so we are going to have to figure that little problem out but I think some basil is gonna go right there so the next open space I'm looking at now uh, is my little patio trellis um, I'm thinking maybe some either another Minnesota midget cantaloupe or um, a cucumber. So you guys let me know what you think because my cucumbers will get diseased once monsoon season really starts to take full effect. They're gonna get what's called powdery mildew on their leaves. I don't have any right now, but look at this guys. I do have cucumbers and a lot more cucumbers coming in. <laughs> so I don't have any powdery mildew on them right now because of you know it's good conditions growing right now for the uh, cucumbers but I will once monsoon season really starts starts to take full effect so I think I might get some cucumbers going to where they're gonna be ready to replace this cucumber and this big cucumber plant all right guys I had to pause for a minute because our neighborhood is getting irrigated um, for the grass so there are mosquitoes galore and they are just flying all over my garden 
and I'm getting eaten alive. So I had to go put on some bug spray. If anybody knows anything that I can spray on myself or just have around that will reduce mosquitoes, please put it down in the comments because I get eaten alive by mosquitoes. And with things like COVID running around, I'm a little leery about getting mosquitoes bites. And I mean, not even just COVID actually, like West Nile, all those different things. But I need some help guys. So anybody know anything about getting rid of mosquitoes and things you can put for like repellent, please let me know. But let's go back to garden planning. So also I forgot to mention that over here, I'm putting in the eggplant here. So I'm actually gonna take these tomatoes off um, and just let them finish getting red inside the house. My Cherokee purple just did not like the summer. Um, but I was looking at Jess's channel on Roots and Refuge and she grows Chinese noodle beans and she says that they grow well in the summer and a lot of other people have said Chinese red noodle beans will go, grow well in the summer with hot heat. So I'm gonna put those here on this trellis. I ordered some from Baker Creek and I'm gonna let them grow up here and I think that that will be pretty just having red beans kind of everywhere. And then I'm gonna put the eggplant right here. So I'm gonna take out this tomato plant. So the last little space I have over here by my compost bin, um, I'm gonna grow something up this trellis. Now this one is kind of being taken over by the cucumber plant, but like I said, once monsoon season really, really gets going, it'll probably end up taking out this plant. So I think I'm going to plant some eggcorn squash right over here because one of my amazing subscribers sent me some, so I'm going to plant some of those right there. Guys, look at this okra. It's everywhere. I'm so excited. So I'm going to uh, grab these. I like to let my okra get about this size. Um, maybe a little bit bigger, but sometimes I tend to forget about it. So I'm gonna grab it while I'm thinking about it. Now while I'm grabbing this basket, I want to mention one thing that is probably running around your garden right now that you see and you want to kill, <laughs> but you need not to. So guys, we live in a desert and we are going to have things like scorpions. Now scorpions, yes, they can sting you and it hurts. And some of them can get really huge and be really scary. But the scorpions are going to really, really, really take down all those pests in your garden because they're gonna eat them. So what you can do is if there's a pot or a trinket that you have in your garden, don't move it because there's probably a scorpion underneath it. Um, don't garden at night because that's when they're running around your garden eating everything. If you see one scorpion, you probably have a lot of scorpions. <laughs> Don't ever blacklight it at night because you'll see a bunch of them and it will freak you out. But just kind of live in harmony with them, guys, because my garden isn't perfect. And it handles a lot of pressures to it, being in the desert with the sun and the harsh temperatures and the harsh conditions and growing with, you know, not a lot of water but I've built an ecosystem where I depend on a lot of these pests that are scary, but they help my garden and they depend on my garden too as well for shelter and food. So if you kind of live in harmony with them, then you can end up growing a way healthier garden. And it's scary, I know, nobody wants to get stung by a scorpion, but they have times that they're out and just don't make them times that you're out. I was out here really late trying to pick some okra and one ran across my foot and I about peed myself, like not gonna even lie. <laughs> I don't like scorpions. But I do not like having pests in my house and not like having bugs all over my garden. So just remember that a lot of things, especially here in the desert, might seem scary. You know, geckos might seem scary, scorpions might seem scary, rattlesnakes, thank God I don't have them but they might seem scary, but they eat a lot of the things that are trying to eat your food because scorpions aren't gonna eat your cucumbers. They will eat the insects that are trying to eat your cucumbers, so. All right, so I got everything that I'm gonna get. And also I want to start some flowers. Um, 
after my experience with spider mites and those lavender plants, I'm just going to uh, stop being lazy and start my own flowers. And that way I can fill my garden with flowers because I have a lot of empty pots that I like to fill with flowers so that then the bees have something. And spider mites, that is one tough thing to get rid of. I actually had to pull that okra plant and right now I have a few of them on my rosemary bush, which I'm not pulling, but it has been a pain of trimming it down to try and get rid of the spider mites. So right now I can just wait for the 110s and 115s to come in to kill everything, but yeah, I'm just gonna stop being lazy and start it myself. So I'm gonna go inside, take this stuff inside. I'm also going to start part two of this video and start all of the seeds that are in there, go grab some soil so that I can fill up the rest of the beds and plant the seeds that I'm gonna start outside, not underneath grow lights. So I will see you guys tomorrow. For me, it'll be the same day, so yes, I will be in the same outfit. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye, guys.